So here we have two bottles. One of these bottles is the Glen Caddam 10 year old. A great bottle is in my top whiskies of 2020. But here we have another bottle. And this bottle is also the Glen Caddam. So it's a 15 year old, but the question is, who's old particular? And what's, who's this Doug guy? And why do the two bottles look so different from each other? Well, grab a dram, grab a seat, and let's... Welcome to First Fill, I'm Phil, and I'm gonna fill you in about whiskey. So the main difference between these two bottles is that this one here, the more confusing one, is from an independent bottling. Douglas Lang from the range Old Particular. But what even are independent bottlers? Well, independent bottlers aren't actually responsible for making the whiskey. And while distillers are responsible for making all the whiskey, they're not responsible for all the bottles that are on the shelf. So in Scotland, there's sort of about 120 plus distilleries. And of those 120, about 40 to 50, maybe more now, because there's just new distilleries opening all the time, are responsible for their own labels, marketing their own specific whiskies, like the Glen Caddam. And these are known as distiller releases. These are known as official bottlings. And those are the whiskies I have to actually talk about most on this channel. These are ones like Lagerverlin, Laphroaig, Glen Farkless, Glen Livis, all those types of whiskies. But the other 70 to 80 distilleries in Scotland don't actually market their whiskey towards consumers. They market their whiskey to big international blended Scotch whiskey brands like Jewers. So often these big blended distilleries and these independent distilleries can have a surplus of casks and this is where the independent bottler comes in. They go into the distilleries and they can choose specific casks, bottle them and relabel them under their own brands like Douglas Lane Old Particular. And the really interesting thing about this, especially when independent bottlers bottle casks from whiskies that generally go into blends, is you can try whiskies that you generally wouldn't we have the opportunity to try it. And a good example of this is Blair Athol. But I think now Blair Athol has a 12 year old offering if you visit the distillery or something. I've never had it, but apparently it does. But generally, Blair Athol goes into blended whiskies. Blended whiskies like Bowles. Now I've got a Bowles bottle here, yeah, a real old vintage one. It's actually like a Bow. Um, I'm not sure if they make this anymore. Someone gave this to me as a gift, and um, yeah, it's real cool like old vintage kind of bottle. But anyway, you, you probably know Bowles. It won't look like this. You've probably seen it and not really noticed it in bars and stuff. It's a huge, huge brand. And with Bowles, they take whiskey from multiple distilleries and put it into a blend, unlike your single malt whiskies. So Blair Athol, you're not really ever gonna try it. So with the independent bottling of Blair Athol, you're gonna try a whiskey that's generally unavailable. And yeah, it could be a really interesting malt. So an independent bottler's role is to select casks and bottle them. And this can either be new make spirit, which they can age themselves, or this can be already matured whiskey, which they can buy directly from the distillery and bottle that. But the thing about their business model is it's generally always niche because they can select a cask which might have a really unique profile because the casks within the distillery, you know, some will be in a colder part of the distillery, some will be in a warmer part of the distillery, one will be a bit humid, one, you know, so all the casks are gonna have a slightly different profile and generally with the official bottlings within the distillery, they blend all the barrels together so it's more of a consistent offering year to year and bottle to bottle. But independent bottlers are generally single cask and in that cask, there often can only be 200 to 300 bottles. So you're getting something really specific. And savvy buyers know that the process of them selecting those casks is generally very thorough, done by people who really know their stuff. And so they can know that they're gonna get a real niche styled, interesting, fantastic whiskey. And so it means that as whiskey buyers, we get a, to try a huge range of drams, drams that we wouldn't normally get to try. And it's just another big door that opens on our whiskey journey that we can go down and explore. So who are some of these independent bottlers? Well, one of them I have right here 
as I've said before, the Douglas Lang. But to make it even more confusing, there's ranges within just the independent bottler. And one of those ranges is the old particular range, which is a single cask range. So this one is a single cask selected from the distillery Glen Caddam that they think the people who are buying independent bottlers will think is really interesting and tasty. And it is, this one's quite different. I mean, they're both great whiskies. Um, I would say the Glen Caddam has had slightly more floral notes, whereas the old particular had slightly more biscuity, malty notes, and also is bottled at a higher strength. So really interesting single cask selection. But then within Douglas Lang as well, there's not just the single cask range, Old Particular, there's, there's also in the extra Old Particular, there's a Provenance range, there's Premier Barrel range, but then there's also blended ranges, like Big Pete, where they select a bunch of different casks from different smoky Isla whiskies and put it together in their own offering. Or there's a Scallywag range where they take the same thing for Speyside. They take a bunch of different casks from different Speyside wood distilleries and they offer that in a range called Scallywag. And then there's a bunch of other independent bottlers like Signatrees. Signatrees are quite a famous one within whiskey fan groups and clubs. And they have what's called a single, single, single malt. It's from a single distillery, they do single casks, and, and then they choose what they think is the best single batch distillation. And so you get this really interesting whiskey that tells you heaps about the single, single, single malt. So it's about as exclusive as it gets really with Signatory. And then there's the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society, and they're interesting, they're similar to the other independent bottlers, but the big difference is they have a club, and most countries around the world will have a club near them from the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society, where people get together, they try their different offerings that they've picked. They can also get like whiskey sent to them on like a yearly basis and all sorts of things. And yeah, you're getting really interesting malts. And then there's other ones like Hunterlang, which also have like sub ranges within Hunterlang, both blended and single cask ones, like the Old and Rare range, the Old Malt Cask range and Scarabus, so all sorts of just within Hunterlang. And then you've got Adelphi, also a really good independent bottler, Gordon and McPhail. And then there's Compass Box, and Compass Box are interesting because they're not like Signatory where they only do single casks, they do blended whiskey. So they select what they think are the best kind of different distilleries around Scotland and they put it together into a specific blend. And this is not targeted for the mass market like other blended whiskies this is targeted to people who really really love whiskey so often they're bottled at higher strength they'll be natural color unchill filtered and they'll be really interesting whiskey so a good one to look into is compass box but the fact that just because it's independent bottler doesn't actually show that it's good quality there's a huge range within independent bottlers there's some cheaper ones there's more expensive ones and again you'll let your palate your nose decide but basically what you're getting when you buy an independent bottling is a really niche offering and a really interesting dram that you otherwise wouldn't normally get to try. So what are some of the main differences between the official bottlings and the independent bottlers? Well, the first one is they often can offer blended whiskies. Just as like what I said before with Compass Box is they can choose really interesting whiskies, blend them together and it kind of destroys the view that all blended whiskies are kind of cheaper whiskies, they're for the mass market. No, this is completely wrong. These are some really fantastic blends. And then there's the single cask ones as we also said about before, especially from Signatory and also Douglas Lang again and the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society where you're getting a specific cask because often the distillery, they'll blend up all the barrels within the distillery to make sure that the distillery has kind of consistent offering. Whereas that doesn't matter for an independent bottler. It doesn't matter if there's some wild cask where it's way different. So they can bottle that and resell that. And then there's cask strength, which is much more common within the independent bottlings than it is with the official offering from the distilleries. Especially with independent bottlers like the Single Malt Whiskey Society, where generally most of those whiskies they sell will be cask strength, straight out of the cask, not watered down, so you're getting much more flavor, it's much more intense. And go watch my video on cask strength whiskey if you wanna learn a bit more about 
cast strength whiskey. So then there's chill filtration and I've just talked about this in a recent video and why some distilleries choose to chill filter the whiskies to make it more clear in the glass when you have water or ice and why some choose to unchill filter the whiskies so that it preserves some of those natural oils and enzymes which they believe actually gives you more flavour in the whisky. And with independent bottlers it's generally pretty much always unchill filtered. You won't get chill filtered. And that's because, yeah, they believe it gives more flavour. Exactly what the old particular says on the back of this bottle, where they say it allows naturally present oils and enzymes in the whisky to make their own special contribution to the nose, mouthfeel, palate, and finish. And so the other thing from that bottle is what they also talk about is colouring. Some distilleries decide to put colouring in their whisky so it looks more orange and beautiful or whatever. With independent bottlings that's a lot rarer. You will get the colour of from what it looked like from the cask. They don't, it doesn't matter about consistency for them because they're offering single casks. It tells you more about the single cask so they want you to know what colour that single cask has given the spirit. Where some distilleries they'll colour them and I don't know it's all kind of a bit fake and stuff and yeah there's kind of a, a turn now where a lot of distilleries now put natural colour on their whiskies because a lot of people were wanting the natural colour. They wanted to look at the whisky and know the colour is actually from what the, has been caused from the cask, not what's been caused from just some colouring being added. And then there's the secret bottlings. And these are independent bottlings where they don't disclose where the whisky is actually from. And this can be either because the actual distillery doesn't want to be associated with this other secret bottle and brand. Or it could be because of the bottler might be doing a blended whiskey and they don't want to reveal their trade secrets of where they've picked those blends from. But sometimes there's some not so secret secret bottlings like the tactical selection from Douglas and Lang where they talked about the whiskey being from the Isle of Skye but there's only one distillery on the Isle of Skye and that is the distillery Talisca. So we know that that secret bottling is actually independent bottling of Talisca. So there you have it, I hope you get to try some independent bottlings for yourself. But the problem is it often can be quite expensive and normally I only buy the official bottlings from the distillery, not independent bottlers and this is, this is an exception because it often is out of my price range because they're so niche and they're so rare or they're so old. And what I'd say for that is look out for whiskey clubs in your area, in your city. There's one I joined in Auckland where they kind of pull together all their money and they can buy some really interesting independent bottlings that you normally wouldn't get to try, really old ones. That's where I got to try the Blair Athol, which I talked about earlier in this video. Yeah, normally it would be so out of my price range. So look out on Facebook groups or Reddit or even the YouTube comments, state what city you're in and say, hey, look, I'm from Toronto. Anyone in Toronto run a whiskey club? You know, find out, connect with each other. And if you want to watch some reviews from someone who reviews independent bottlings, go to the channel Eat Smoke Drink. He's a mate of mine, he's from New Zealand, he lives in Auckland as well, and he reviews some like god level Super Saiyan whiskey, which is just super interesting and whiskeys you probably will never get to try. But really interesting to see where your whiskey journey can take you, what roads it can go down eventually. But above all, whether you drink official bottlings or whether you drink independent bottlings, make sure that you share and enjoy. Beauty. <laughs>